we meet in God's name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Thank you very much, and good morning and welcome to our Eucharist on this Tuesday. A special day for us for the 14th of July is the day in which we celebrate John Keeble's commemoration. It's a festival for us because we are under the patronage of Keeble College in Oxford, and I know many of you have visited there with the parish over the years. And if you've been to the Warden's Lodge, if you've been up there for dinner in the evening when we do our February visit, many of you will have seen the marvellous um, paintings, the portrait of John Keeble, which is so vivid and so wonderful, which actually hangs in the Warden's lodgings there. It makes you realise he was a very human person, and I thought you might like to know one or two things about him. John Keeble was born in 1792, so in a sense his life is very contemporary with this parish church. He showed early brilliance as a scholar and became a fellow of Oriel College, Oxford, at the age of 19. A few years, just a few years, before he was ordained. He won great praise for his collection of poems issued in 1827, known as the Christian Year. And that book is still around today and is the most beautiful um, collection of poetry. And he was elected Professor of Poetry in Oxford in 1831. So just as this church was 10 years old, he was at the height of his academic career. He became a leader of the Tractarian movement, which protested at the threats to the church from evangelical developments in both politics and theology. He nevertheless was not an ambitious man. He didn't seek preferment to become a bishop or anything like that, which many of the other Tractarians did. But he actually became a parish priest in a parish near Winchester, a position he held until his death in 1866. John Keeble continued to write scholarly books and was praised for his character and his spiritual counsel. Yet he's still best remembered for a sermon he preached in Oxford at Great St. Mary's, considered by many to actually have been the trigger of the beginning of the Oxford movement which brought back into the fold, as it were, the Catholic practices of the universal church. And that particular sermon, that extraordinary sermon, was delivered on this day in 1833. So we look back over the years and we give thanks for all that John Keeble contributed. And we pray especially today for Keeble College itself and for the work it does in Oxford to further both Christian and global thinking. So now we bring ourselves to worship by saying together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts that by inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus is the good shepherd, and in every generation he raises up overseers to shepherd the church of God that he obtained with his own blood. We are sinners. Let us call to mind the times when we have failed to hear his voice and not followed where he has led. Lord Jesus Christ, you call by name those who are yours. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you lead us in the right paths for your name's sake. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the door of the sheepfold. Those who enter by you will be saved. Lord, 
have mercy. mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all, who truly repents, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so to the colic for this day, the festival of St. John Kivus, let us pray. Father of the eternal word, in whose encompassing love all things in peace and order move, grant that, as your servant John Keebel adored you in all creation, so we may have a humble heart of love for the mysteries of your church and know your love to be new every morning. This we ask through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now attend to the reading. A reading from the Book of Lamentations. This I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion says my soul, therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, Your love is before my eyes, O Lord. Your love is before my eyes, O Lord. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have walked with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Your love is before my eyes, O Lord. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. I have not joined the company of the false, nor consorted with the deceitful. Your love is before my eyes, O Lord. I hate the gathering of evildoers, and I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go about your altar. Your love is before my eyes, O Lord. To make heard the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house of your habitation and the place where your glory abides. Your love is before my eyes, O Lord. Good. 
good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise Christ. May I speak in God's name, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well, it's wonderful that John Keeble's day should fall on a Tuesday, so we are rightly celebrating his festival, rightly celebrating it in the white vestments of priests and bishops as well today. So it's a a very wonderful thing that we can fully acknowledge John Keeble's role. And it's interesting, isn't it? We have such a short gospel reading today, and yet one which is so, so important. When you see this in Matthew's gospel in chapter 11, it starts at verse 28 today, you'll find if you look just before it, Jesus has commissioned the disciples to go out. And we all know, don't we, I think, that the commission to actually go out and preach the word and to take healing and the good news to everybody outside is a big challenge. So in a sense, Jesus, I think, actually makes this the counterbalance to that commission to the disciples, the challenge that Jesus has just given to them, which must have been pretty overwhelming. And so these words of consolation, these words of reassurance, are so, so, so important. The first phrase of the words of Jesus today comes as close as we can to being universal. But who hasn't felt burdened? Who hasn't felt weary, carrying heavy burdens? And who hasn't sought rest? We look for all ways of being refreshed, most certainly, don't we? And we have the short-term fixes, be it a Coke or a cup of coffee, or we get away for the day, or a bit of shopping therapy, perhaps, giving off and buying something, all of which are designed to try and actually make us a little bit more refreshed. But come to me, Jesus says, and I will give you rest. His yoke, his teaching and demands, which often sound so tough, are, he says, easy and they're light. His burden, he acknowledges it's a burden, but he says, my burden is light, my yoke is easy. So what he says there is very much a case of reassurance that if we do take on what Jesus bids us to take on, it won't be a problem. He will be with us and he will carry that burden with us. I wonder what we would think these days when we actually think about what this is all about. When we think about following Jesus, I hope we don't think about all of those regulations, all of the Levitical rules, The Ten Commandments may be, or a good general guide, a skeleton, but of course we know that Jesus turned things round a bit. He just reminded us that the principles that we must follow 
in the new covenant, loving God and loving our neighbour. He doesn't want us to be overburdened with all the rest of it. And in a sense, he always argues, doesn't he, that the Pharisees and the priests had lost track of what's real and what's important to the world. Our life as disciples is not built around those laws or around our personal commitment to Christ the Lord, but we need to be actually focused on the person. We need to be looking directly at Jesus. And most of us know from experience, especially perhaps from that of falling in love, how demanding and satisfying at the same time are the requirements flowing from devotion to a person. There is a commitment, there is a requirement on people to actually commit themselves. But as much as we know when we fall in love, in actual fact, things, things become easier, things become bright and bouncy and bubbly. So we should realize that when we follow Christ, that is very much the same. You know, this little text, this little short gospel reading today is often regularly used on celebrations of the sacred heart of Jesus because he literally calls us and then reassures us and says that his heart will be with us. The closer we unite our hearts with Jesus' hearts, the more they will be at peace and the more we will be united with Jesus' intention and bound up in his love. So let us ask God to bless us this day and to remind us a little bit like we are reminded in the Lamentations. The Lord is good to those who wait for him in the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Amen. Now, we may have some problems today with a little bit of noise outside. As we came in this morning, we noticed the council were pulling up with their vans, and I think the graveyard is having a haircut today. That's a good bit of good news. But if you have any noise in the background, you will now know that in actual fact, it's the council actually giving us a short back and sides outside to make the church look that little bit smarter. So we can't get in their way, I don't think. So let us now move to our prayers of intercession, taking our love of the Lord to the Father and asking in intercession for those things which we should ask for. Heavenly Father, in every age you raise up pastors and leaders for your church to reflect the light of Christ and to lead us in the way of holiness. We thank you for John Keeble and those who have been shepherds of your flock. Bless Christopher and Richard and all those who minister in your church today with gifts of care and nurture. Give a pastoral heart to all bishops priests and deacons, and strengthen all who are called to be leaders of your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for those pastors and spiritual directors whose influence is hidden from the world. We pray for those in monastic communities, those who give spiritual direction to others. Bless them in their quiet guidance of those who seek after your holiness and truth. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for those who give pastoral care to the sick and the suffering. Help those who are distressed through following bad advice. Have mercy on those whose lives lack purpose or direction and bring them the care they need for wholeness and healing. We pray especially today for Dylan Long, Steve Watts, Robert Willer, Peter Coley, 
Margaret Hudson, Kwame, Sandra Wood, Anne Gillis, and Barbara Atkins. We pray for those mentioned in our intercessions book. And in a moment of quiet, we offer to God those who we carry in our own hearts this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all who have worked to lead others into the way of truth, but who are now at rest. We pray especially today for the souls of Lily Weems, Thayagi Stephenanthem, Fred Gearing and Christopher Tuckwell, priests. We remember those whose years mind call, falls at about this time. Rest eternal, grant them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray that you will make us worthy of everlasting joy. In the fellowship of John Keeble, the Blessed Virgin Mary, Peter, Paul, and all your saints, in the glory of your kingdom, where you live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand for the peace, if you can. We are the body of Christ in the one spirit. We were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another a sign of that peace. And as we do so, let us remember those who we should be praying for today. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here. His spirit is here. Lift up your heart. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Today we honour John Keeble, who in your loving providence enabled your church to grow in spirit as the body of Christ. To your children he faithfully proclaimed the good news of salvation, and nourished them by administering your sacraments. Through a pastor's love, he led your people to share your grace and witness to the world in the communion of one true faith and in the work of selfless charity. On this his feast day, we join with him to praise you, and in the company of angels and all the host of heaven, we sing forever of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this hour sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of John Keeble, Mary the Mother of God, Peter, Paul, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. 
Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. So we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Behold, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his presence. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Let us pray. Almighty God, shepherd of your people, whose son, John, servant, John Keeble, revealed the loving service of Jesus Christ in his ministry as a pastor of your people. By this Eucharist in which we have participated, awaken within us the love of Christ and keep us faithful to our Christian calling. Through him who laid down his life for us, but is alive and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. And we pray together. Almighty Father. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, just one or two notices before we finish our service this morning. First of all, it's good to see you all here this morning, and we hope some of you may come along a little later at 11 o'clock when the church building will be open for silent private prayer. Please do remember to bring your Bible or your prayer book with you. We look forward to welcoming you then into the house of the Lord. We are hoping soon that we may be able to actually open our services to the general public. It's obviously a bit of a big challenge when in actual fact we can only accommodate about 20 people in the church at any one time. So we may well start by actually opening up our communion service on a Tuesday to um, the general public. But we have to get that organised and ordered and in a way in which we can be fair to our whole congregation. But we do hope soon that we will be sharing the sacrament with one another again. 
And as the noise outside fades away, we look forward to seeing you later with our new improved and streamed graveyard outside. And meanwhile, we wish you every blessing for the week ahead. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.